Hi, I'm Umbrian Labris, and today we're going to talk about and honor the disappearing legacy of field moves in Pokemon games, by which I mean ways in which Pokemon can be used to expand or to facilitate how you explore the Pokemon world. For a huge chunk of Pokemon history, we had HMs, Hidden Machines, an item similar to a TM that would teach a Pokemon a move that it could use not only in battle, but also to interact with the overworld. Some Pokemon could use Surf to help you cross the ocean, others could light up a cave to help you find your way, or fly you back to places you've been to. HMs were kind of annoying though, because most of those moves were not very good in battle, and you couldn't have your Pokemon forget those moves when you were teaching them something new. So you were basically stuck with that move for all or most of the game, and in some games there were as many as eight different HMs, so they took up a significant portion of the move slots on your team. So people were overall quite pleased, myself included here, when in Generation 7, HMs were replaced with Ride Pokemon instead. These were essentially rental Pokemon that you could summon with a Ride Pager. So you couldn't use them in battle, but you could have them perform basically the same kinds of tasks that we'd had HMs for before. So that felt really nice because you no longer had to worry about giving your Pokemon those moves or keeping those Pokemon in your party. So now you have a lot more flexibility to build your team exactly the way you want to. Sounds great, right? But have you noticed the correlation between HMs becoming less of a burden and Pokemon games being easier? HMs didn't make Pokemon games difficult, but they were certainly part of it. You had to build your teams and your movesets around HMs, which was an added challenge. Your Pokemon and their moves were basically a resource that you had to manage effectively. But also, finding the HMs themselves, the items, was also a point of difficulty. In Gen 1, there were five HMs, but the only one that you were given as a natural part of the story was cut. All other HMs were out of the way. Fly required you to investigate an optional area. To get Flash, you had to backtrack a long way off course. And for both Surf and Strength, which were required to complete the story, you had to navigate the Safari Zone effectively, even though you had very little indication of what you were looking for or what you would get for finding it. And then Ride Pokemon weren't really your Pokemon, so you didn't create a bond with them. Do you remember how nice it was in Heart Gold and Soul Silver when the Pokemon following you was the one performing the field move? In Let's Go, we had the partner Pokemon secret techniques, which I guess meant it was your own Pokemon, but the fact that none of them required a quest or were out of the way at all was pretty disappointing. And having the same Pokemon for all of your field moves, unless you were riding on Lapras or Gyarados on water, felt weird in a world where any Pokemon could be outside of its ball. So Eevee can chop down a tree, but Scyther can't? And now in Sword and Shield, we don't even really have field moves anymore. We have a bicycle that can go on water and a sky taxi service that doesn't even warrant a full animation. So a lot has been left behind, which is why I want to propose a few ways to bring back HMs and or ride Pokemon in a way that is even better than before. These are just a few ideas and they don't all work together all that well, so I would love to hear your ideas too. I want to begin by talking about ride Pokemon because I've already talked about most of these ideas before and I don't want to spend too much time on them. I think the best approach to ride Pokemon is somewhere between Alola and Let's Go with some added tweaks. What Alola did well is that you were actually using Pokemon to do field moves, but they didn't have to be in your party and you could call on them whenever. What Let's Go did well is that there was a much bigger number of Pokemon that you could ride, although most of them were not the field move kind, but they were all your own Pokemon. So make a ride pager that registers your own Pokemon instead of rentals, and make multiple Pokemon have access to the same abilities. So you can ride on any Pokemon that can support your weight, whether that's on land or in water or even in the sky. Any big burly Pokemon can push boulders. Anything with claws can cut trees. What I would want to make sure is that unlocking these Pokemon and these abilities actually requires some kind of challenge and you're not just given every single one as part of the story. There should be some kind of side quest or like an optional area that you need to explore or a mini game challenge and that's how you unlock the field move. Whether that's a move tutor kind of NPC who will teach your Pokemon how to cut trees or whatever or whether that's 
more like a traditional HM, like an item that does it. Whatever the case, these would be teachable abilities that are not part of the battle moveset. A completely different approach would be to have those field moves be innate abilities of the Pokémon, so there's nothing to unlock or teach besides just catching the Pokémon themselves. And so you just make Pokémon available in the game at the point when the player should have access to those field abilities. You don't want players to get past those rocks until they've at least reached the third city? Well, no Pokémon that is available before the third city is able to smash rocks at any point in their evolutionary line. It's a trickier approach to do well, I think, because you have to make sure that the Pokémon distributions and even the Pokémon designs make sense with it. Like, say Blastoise is a Pokémon that you can ride on water. Well, then you can't have a water route adjacent to your starting town and have Squirtle as one of your starter options because you just know that someone is going to raise that Squirtle all the way into a Blastoise without going anywhere else first. Or I guess you could design your game in a way that allows for that possibility that doesn't break everything else. But I also want to talk about ideas more in the vein of traditional HM moves, as in a move that you can use both in battle and in the field. There were three big problems with the way that it used to be. The first one was that you couldn't forget those moves. So because you're teaching the Pokémon those moves without knowing what else they might learn in the future, you're basically forced to make a decision with incomplete information, which is just unfair and kind of unnecessary. Even if you still need to have that move on your team, just being allowed to switch which Pokémon knows that move is a big relief. You're still managing the same resources, you're just given more flexibility in how you manage them. The second problem is that many of those moves were bad moves in battle. If every HM move was like Surf, people would not have complained as much. And the third problem that kind of goes hand in hand with that is that there was very little variety, with only four types represented across 11 moves that have been HMs at some point. Some of those moves have already been improved over time, Fly, Dive, and Rock Smash all had their base powers boosted by 20, Whirlpool actually had a buff to both power and accuracy, and Defog can now clear a whole bunch of effects from the battlefield. Oh yeah, Defog. <laughs> yeah, Defog. <laughs> but we can do better. For example, make Cut a Steel-type move that does super effective damage to Grass-types. Strength is about boulders, so make it Rock-type. There's no physical rock-type move with 100% accuracy and 80 base power, so we can fill that niche. Flash could be fairy-type and hit multiple opponents, and then either make it do a little bit of damage so it's like a dazzling gleam that trades power for an accuracy drop, or keep it as a status move but make it drop the accuracy by two stages instead of one to really make it threatening. There are even some existing moves that could become field moves. Bulldoze, for example, would be perfect for clearing away the jagged terrain that you need Mudsdale Gallop for in Alola. Odor Sleuth could be used like Stoutland Search. For that matter, why not let the weather moves, Rain Dance, Sunny Day, Hail, and Sandstorm, I got them all, actually affect the overworld weather, so you have some control over the wild Pokémon spawn rates. And of course, bring back the field effects of Teleport, Dig, Sweet Scent, Headbutt. And that's not to mention new obstacles that could be added with new and unique moves to clear them. Maybe there's a fire move that can clear away ice, or a dark move that helps you avoid trainers, or an electric move that unlocks doors, you know, because that's a trope for some reason. Again, you still have to manage resources, but they are resources that you actually want to manage. And frankly, with the box link giving us access to all of our Pokémon pretty much anytime, anywhere, Managing your team is already much less of a burden. I think personally my ideal solution would be a combination of HMs and Ride Pokémon. Like, with the box link, you don't even need to worry about a Ride pager. You can just change up your team, and that seems to be something that they want to encourage anyway with party-wide experience. Make it so that you can have a Pokémon accompany you, and that Pokémon gets to use its field moves. It doesn't have to be a Ride thing necessarily, just a Pokémon doing its thing in the overworld. But the way you teach them those moves is HM, so they are both field moves and battle moves. Since you can change up your team, you can have one team with moves that are specifically meant to deal with water routes, and a different team for cave routes, and yet another team with moves for forest routes, for example. Anyway, these are just some ideas, and I would really like to hear yours as well. 
Likes and shares are also really appreciated. This video is dedicated to my friend Kai. Thank you for getting me thinking about this. And thank you also to my patrons, especially luxury patron Ethan Saffron. I'm Henri Libris. I'll see you in the next chapter. <laughs>